I'm Claire Ridgway, creator of the Amberlynn Files, and today I'd like you to accompany me on my quest to find out the truth about the lost Boleyns, Henry Boleyn and Thomas Boleyn, brothers of Amberlynn. This quest started in July 2011, when I was alerted to the fact that Alison Weir was claiming that four of the Boleyn children, Mary, Anne, George and Thomas, survived childhood. What? I just could not understand this claim, as my research into the Boleyn family had always suggested that Thomas the Younger had died in childhood. Time for some digging. In her book, Mary Boleyn, The Great and Infamous Hall, Alison Weir writes, Only four of the Boleyn children survived infancy. Thomas Boleyn, whose grave in Penshurst Church, Kent, is marked by a cross and the date 1520. Mary, Anne and George. Then... Thomas Boleyn's heir and namesake lived until 1520. I just had to check this out. So on the 22nd of July, 2011, I set off on a quest to Penshurst Church with my good friend Claire Cherry, a fellow Boleyn researcher. St John the Baptist Church Penshurst is in the beautiful Kent village of Penshurst, home of the famous and historic Penshurst Place, once owned by the Duke of Buckingham and the Sydney family. It was a beautiful sunny day, just the right kind of day to bring out the beauty of this historic village and church. Our walk from car to church took us under an arch of timbered Tudor buildings and cottage gardens. As we walked through the arch, there ahead of us was the church, standing in all of its glory. The church was even more beautiful on the inside, particularly as floral displays were being put together for a wedding the next day. Thomas Boleyn's tomb took some finding, because it's so tiny compared to the other tombs and brasses. But my husband Tim found it in the south chapel of the church, the Sydney Chapel. This chapel was stunning. Sunlight was flooding in through its leaded windows, and the tunnel-vaulted ceiling with its heraldic shields was breathtaking. There, amongst the large brasses, stone monuments and sculptures, was a tiny brass cross on the floor with the inscription, Thomas Boleyn, son of Sir Thomas Boleyn. Claire and I got down on our hands and knees to examine the cross and inscription, and were not surprised to find that there was no date of 1520 on the brass. However, we picked up a church guide, and it was in that that we read that the brass belonged to Thomas Boleyn, infant brother of Anne Boleyn, who died in 1520. This guide also described Anne Boleyn as mistress and subsequently second wife of King Henry VIII, so we didn't take it too seriously. But we were now left with questions. Why did the church guide say that Thomas died in 1520? And why was Alison Weir claiming this too? It just didn't make sense. How could another Boleyn have survived into adulthood without us knowing about him? Mission Lost Boleyns was launched. Claire had two missions. One, to investigate parish records to see if a date of death could be found for Thomas Boleyn the Younger. And two, to contact David Luff, author of The Church Guide. I decided to contact Alison Weir to ask her what evidence she had for 1520. And I also started researching monumental brasses. Claire hit a brick wall with the parish records, as they only dated back to 1558, but she came up trumps when David Luff emailed her back. He explained that the present church guidebook was based on an older guidebook and that he could not remember where the 1520 date came from, although he himself thought that the tomb could date to 1521-1522, when Sir Thomas Boleyn was appointed keeper of Penshurst Place. Perhaps little Thomas had died on one of his father's visits to Penshurst. Alison Weir explained to me that there was a record of the date of the brass in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, giving the same date as the church guide, i.e. 1520. I did some digging into the Ashmolean's online records of brasses and found that Henry Boleyn's brass cross in St Peter's Church, Hever was also dated 1520. I contacted Alison Weir again, sharing this information with her and asking her if she thought that the 1520 date might refer to the date that the tombs were marked with brasses 
rather than the date of death, seeing as both brasses were dated 1520. Alison Weir replied, simply commenting that Henry Boleyn's tomb was so tiny that I think he must have been an infant. This puzzled me, as his tomb was identical in size and style to Thomas Boleyn the Younger's at Penshurst, a tomb she believed to be that of an adult. More digging was required. I went back to the Ashmolean records and used their bibliography and list of sources to find records of the boys' brasses in Mill Stevenson's A List of Monumental Brasses in the British Isles, a 1926 book based on older 19th century records, and W. D. Belcher's Kentish Brasses, 1888. Mill Stevenson described both brasses as small crosses made locally and dated circa 1520, so not exactly 1520, but circa 1520. I then carried on researching monumental brasses, trying to find a similar brass cross to see if I could prove that these were only used on children's tombs and not those of adults. I spent many days browsing through books of brasses and brass rubbings and eventually found a record in Mill Stevenson of a tomb in North Tuddenham, Norfolk. It was described as a small cross marking the 1625 grave of a two-year-old girl, Frances, daughter of Thomas Skip, Esquire. That was the only small brass cross I could find, so I sent an email off to the Monumental Brass Society asking about the dating of the Berlin brasses. In the meantime, Alison Weir published an article on her website explaining that the 1520 date of death of Thomas Berlin was based on three sources. One, a book on Penshurst Village compiled by local archivist John Flower, which dated the brass to 1520. Two, the Penshurst Church leaflet, which also gave a date of 1520. Three, the Ashmolean Museum's records. She also explained that she had a photo of the brass, although the inscription in the photo was unclear. She went on to say that she had little cause to doubt the information regarding the date because it had been corroborated by three sources, but that she had been emailed by one person saying that there was no date on the brass. This email had caused her to do further research. She contacted the Reverend Tom Home of Penshurst regarding the brass and was told that John Flower, the archivist, had surmised that Thomas Boleyn had been born and died at Penshurst when his father was keeper. Alison Weir dismissed this line of argument because Sir Thomas Boleyn did not become keeper of Penshurst until 1522. She also contacted Dr Eleanor Stanley of the Ashmolean Museum, who stated that she believed the brass had been dated to circa 1520 on stylistic grounds. Interestingly, Weir then concluded that as both boys' tombs were dated circa 1520, that both Thomas and Henry could have lived into early manhood, as the size of the brasses did not necessarily indicate that they were children when they died. Thomas Boleyn, Weir wrote, is likely to have been the eldest son, and if he was the son who went to Oxford University at 17, then he must have been born in the mid to late 1490s. After studying at Oxford, it is possible that he entered the household of the Duke of Buckingham, which might explain his burial at Penshurst. Buckingham, of course, was executed in 1521. I just couldn't believe this conclusion. To me, it just didn't have any basis at all. There really was no evidence to back it up. I had to dig deeper. Thankfully, just as I was tearing my hair out, I had an email from Michael Harris of the Monumental Brass Society, who had kindly spoken to the Society's Kentish Brass expert for me. The expert explained that The bull and crosses are two one-offs of the same design. There was a small workshop in Kent around 1500 to 1530-35, which produced some rather low-quality brasses with a very debased script style. Most of them are listed by Mill Stevenson as local. The design was never a style, just a bit of Kentish localism. 
The earlier cross brasses of the 14th century in particular were of course high quality, mainly London work for priests. The Bullen examples are almost certainly to children. So, here was a Kentish brass expert saying that the brasses could only be dated to 1500 to 1530, 1535, a 35 year period, and that they were almost certainly to children. Now, of course, I cannot say 100% that Thomas Boleyn did not die in 1520 and that he was definitely a child at death, but I am challenging Alison Weir's theory that Thomas Boleyn died in 1520, was a student at Oxford University and a member of the Duke of Buckingham's household. In my opinion, a theory has to be based on some evidence, and there is none. The circa 1520 date is questionable, there is no evidence that Thomas went to Oxford University, and there is no evidence that Thomas served the Duke of Buckingham. In fact, there is no evidence of Thomas Boleyn the Younger at all, except for that tiny tomb at Penshurst. Now for my theory. In July 1536, Sir Thomas Boleyn wrote to Thomas Cromwell, referring to his financial hardship when he married Elizabeth Boleyn and she gave him a child every year. If we believe that the Boleyns were married around 1498-1499, surely Thomas Boleyn must have only been referring to the early years before he inherited Hever Castle in 1505. I would suggest then that all five Boleyn children that we know about were born between 1499 and 1505. Thomas Boleyn could well have been the eldest son, being named after his father and grandfather, and Henry Boleyn could have been the second son, named after King Henry the Seventh. Perhaps the order of births went 1499 Mary Boleyn, 1500 Thomas Boleyn, 1501 Anne Boleyn, 1502 or 3 Henry Boleyn, 1504 George Boleyn. Who knows? But what I do know is that these boys died after 1505 when the family moved to Kent, hence the burials in Kent, and I believe that the styles and sizes of their tombs and brasses suggest that they died in childhood. This is also suggested by the absence of their names in the court records. Surely if the Boleyn boys died in adulthood in 1520, when Thomas Boleyn was an important man, their brasses would have been more ornate. The contrast between Sir Thomas Boleyn's huge tomb and brass at Hever and Henry's little cross on the floor next to it is dramatic. It only makes sense to me if Henry Boleyn was indeed a young child. These lost Boleyn boys are still a bit of a mystery, but my research has led me that little bit closer to them. It is sad that they probably died in childhood, but at least that saved them from getting caught up in the brutal events of May 1536, which saw the executions of their brother and sister, George Boleyn and Queen Anne Boleyn. Rest in peace, Thomas and Henry Boleyn, once lost but now remembered. I am Claire Ridgway from the Anne Boleyn Files, and I'm on a quest for the truth about the Boleyn family. <laughs>